But he's got one problem, Ted, in the form of that four ball near the bottom right corner. And he made sure to leave himself an angle on this three. He's going to take that cue ball over towards that seven and four and try and develop it. Now, is he left room for the four? It's close. Looks like he has. At least he was queuing up as though he had. That is very close. That has to be considered a bit of a let off. That was unlucky. Dennis played that shot beautifully and deserved a better fate. Well, this is the biggest crowd we've seen around this TV table today. And uh, not surprising, Earl attracts them everywhere he goes. Hasn't left it. Earl said earlier that uh, this morning he got up and ran seven miles and did 700 push uh, sit ups. Well, then he woke up. <laughs> Last time I interviewed Earl and we talked about the running and was in the lobby of a of the hotel in Taipei. World Championships were being staged there years ago, Ted and talking about being fit and who happens to walk by him? Danny Basovich, Kid Delicious. Oh. <laughs> Perfect timing. Yeah. <laughs> Earl tore a strip off poor Danny, who was innocently coming back to his room. Oh, nice jump shot here. Let's look, look at that again. Watch this. Right into the four. And into the eight, that was well done. And position on the four for the shot. Lifted up on that and was lucky it found gravity, that ball. He was up off that cue early. And notice the length of Earl's cue. I mean, his hand doesn't go anywhere near the end of the butt. I'm guessing it's well over 60 inches. bank into the opposite side. Never does anything without a little flair. The Pearl Hall of Famer. And you'll see his name on many player profiles as a one of the favorites, all time favorites. A shot maker extraordinaire, Ted. And uh, he can certainly talk it up with the best of them, can he? He keeps a bit of a running commentary going when he plays. And if you've ever been on the receiving end of it while watching a match in person, it's at first it's quite interesting. You're going, wow, he, is he talking to me? Why is he talking to me? And then it gets a little unnerving after a while. Well, it, I mean, I've actually played Earl in a pool tournament, and uh, the hardest part for me was not to make eye contact. Because once you make eye contact, you're in a conversation, and you're his opponent. Right. 
Well, he certainly got his opinions about how the game should be played and all the different rules he feels that should be instituted in pool. But I will say this for Earl, he came in here yesterday and he was nothing but complimentary about everything he saw here. And uh, when they announced the break rule where you're not allowed to mess with the rack, you can't even come down and look at the balls. There was a room full of like 300 people, all the players at the players meeting and Earl just clapped when he heard that rule. He was the one, the only one who clapped. And uh, you know, he's a real stickler for the purity of the game and, and, and preserving the purity and integrity of the game. But nothing down. No, second dry break from Earl. First one went unpunished. And he hasn't left Dennis a shot at this one either, at least a, a shot that presents an attacking option. So containment, the order of the day. It has been wall to wall pool. We're on our 12th hour now here at the Mandalay Bay, and you, you can imagine 256 players starting, getting it down to the final 16 in three days. Wow, great kick from Earl there. Yeah. Played it at a speed that he was hoping to put distance between the cue ball and that one ball, and he's done just that and found cover. Dennis will raise up here and try and jump over those. Long distance. He's, uh, he's not supposed to touch the ball like that. I mean, you could get called for a foul by touching a moving ball like that, but the referee let him get away with that. He's supposed to let that ball go. Well, the fact that it was dead in the heart of the it pocket, Ted. <laughs> I know. I mean, you could be like, I don't know what they, I mean, it was already going to be a foul, but I don't know, but didn't seem right there. You're not supposed to touch the ball. Surprised Nigel didn't give him a warning. Oh, again, a little unlucky. Played to get the three off the cushion, and much like the last rack, he did well, just misjudged the pace of the cue ball. And But again, Dennis knows he's departing the table prematurely here. And even though Earl really can't attack this three, funny things happen when you allow your opponent back in early. So the kiss leaves the three ball on for Dennis Hatch.
Well, Dennis is going to have to stay close throughout this match. As we pointed out earlier, he hasn't really played for an entire year. Good recovery there. One one. Dennis secures the rack and with it the break. And a handful of Canadians in the crowd I see there as we check in on Skylar Woodward, one of the outside tables. Oh look at this. This is a good good matchup here. Imran Majid is a, a quality player from England. Well, very much so. Imran's been at it a long time and uh, for a while there he'd had to take a backseat to the likes of Darren Appleton, Daryl Peach, Chris Smelling, Carl Boys. And uh, but in the last three years Imran has really stepped it up a few notches. He's had some success on the Euro Tour. This would be a big win if he could manage to pull this off against Skylar Woodward. This would send Skylar to the loser side of the bracket here at the U.S. Open. And now we're back. So Dennis Hatch gets one back, ties it at one. Nice break. Everything in the open here for Dennis. He can maneuver that cue ball around. One more look. That one ball thought about staying on the table and finally, much to Dennis's pleasure, dropped into the side. Uh, if he can replicate that a few more times, he could keep Earl in his chair. He's got that one ball going right towards the side pocket. That wasn't easy. You had to play that in a way to miss all the colors down this end of the table and get back up for the three. He wants a little bit of angle on this four, and he's got it. Again, both of these players, when the balls are there, they don't waste a lot of time. They've kind of been there and got the T-shirt to prove it. Tons of experience at the table right now.
No. Look out. That's a massive, massive error. Yeah, that's uh, no excuse. You know what, Dennis will be the first to tell you to. He just let the cue ball go there. Didn't think anything bad could happen and just cost him that rack. And I have a sneaking suspicion it's going to cost him a few more. And I was just about to say that this match could have gone one of either two ways. You know, here's a guy who hasn't played for a year. And there's some people who will say, well, that way you can come out loose. And that's what I was thinking to him. But Dennis, he says, well, that's true. But, <laughs> you, you know, it, it could go the other way as well. Because, you know, you just, it, there's no substitute for playing uh, on a regular basis. Well, back to the outside table where Majid is breaking for the match. And secure the ball down. As I mean, you've noted, Ted, this would be a huge win for Imran. Definitely. This is a, uh, uh, this would be a, a big scalp. Well, he's got a long shot on the two. Rather the one. Okay. A little hard to see. Yeah, it looks like it might be the three next. So. Back to Strickland in the break. Rack number four. Two one he's in front. He, he just received an Easter gift. Oh, beautiful touch there. Look at the way these unfolded. All right, shall we start the watch? How long do you think this will take, this rack? <laughs> About a minute, 10 seconds? I'll be more curious how, how many racks that lost cue ball from Dennis Hatch is going to cost. I think it's going to cost a few. Forget all the antics, Jim. I know you've been around this game a long time. You know, let's just talk about pure talent. When you've seen Earl on, how would you compare him to? Oh, no. How did he miss that? Probably just took his uh, eye off it. A very basic mistake. Wow. Just assumed it was too easy to miss and was thinking more about the cue ball. Careless. Very careless. Oh, wow. And after the table got turned over to him by a careless shot, should never have given it back so soon. So a lifeline for Dennis Hatch there, as uh, he should have paid dearly for that scratch in the last rack. Well, okay. you know, you were you were asking me. I mean, in this rack, yeah. Oh. What is going on, Jim? Ted, right now, yeah, you're seeing the byproduct of a guy that really doesn't play much and a guy that's 57 years old. <laughs> but Strickland, uh, you know, in, in terms of pure shot making, when he was in his prime, there was no one better. No one closed the deal better than him. But having said that, he's won five U.S. Opens. Shane's won five U.S. Opens. For me, Shane's five U U.S. Opens are much stronger. I mean, they're global now. When Earl when Earl was dominating this event, it wasn't nearly as global as it is now. That's a good point. Well, a mistake-filled rack, and uh, Earl takes it to move up three to one. And now, there you see Imran Majid, uh, his lead now cut to ten to eight. Yeah, this is going to be tough for Dennis to uh, pull this one off. Yeah, Johnny Archer just over Dennis's shoulder. Johnny playing some pretty good pool here this this week, hopefully for him. But they all come out to see Earl. 
You just never know what he's going to show you. And now a few of the old wrist weights are coming there out. There you go. Yeah. And what's this about? Well, this maybe he's got the wrong size. Yeah, you better go get the bigger one, Earl. Now he used to wear back like something around his waist, like weights, and he said it was for so he wouldn't come up on the ball when he when he shot it. Is this something similar? The what would you put a weight around your wrist for? To, uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of a good reason. You've never done that, Jim, in your career. <laughs> All right, so he, he's got the weight around the right. Is this to put more power in this? Let's see if he takes it off after the break. <laughs> well, nothing. The weight certainly didn't help. Dry break. Well, he's 3 1 ahead. And he really hasn't given us any indication of what he is capable of just yet. But Dennis has got to try and eliminate those unforced errors. He's had a chance to win every rack. Well, if he can get through a few racks here and uh, catch up and not make those mistakes, maybe he can build up some confidence. But uh, right now, he's probably questioning himself whether he has what it takes. Well, he's going to come with a big shot here. He's going to knock this in and draw the cue ball back for the four. So he's going to hit this with a bit of power. Oh, oh. wow. Yeah, he wanted to spear that table. And that confidence is going to be shattered even further for Dennis Hatch. Look at that. Straight in the pocket. You know, Dennis will be the first one to tell you. You know, that's, it's a bad shot, too. Yes, it's unlucky, but it's a bad shot as well. Should never have had that side pocket in the equation. Should be 4 1 now for Earl. He's done nothing spectacular. He's just pounced on the mistakes from Dennis Hatch. There it is. 4 to 1 now. Three rack lead for Earl. Uh, he's got an opponent who has just, uh, whose game is littered with mistakes. And uh, here we go. It's uh, Imran Majid now leading 10 to 8 over Skylar Woodward. And uh, Majid at the table, playing safe. This is the second round here on day one. On the winner's side, it's still, if you lose this, and you go over to the left side, the loser's bracket, it's a very long road to get to the final 16 still. Now look at that. This is this could be curtains here. That ball almost went in the pocket for Skyler. Yeah, this could be the last chance for Skyler in this one. Four open balls for Imran Majid to seal it. You really can't see him failing here. So Earl Strickland now with a 4-1 lead and we'll keep you up to date on what happens on that uh, 
Majid and Woodward match. Again, Jim, nothing. And an opportunity now for Hatch to get one back. But what we've seen so far is not promising for Dennis. A lot of mistakes in his game, a lot of errors. Yeah, last ball moving. That eight, real willing it into the corner pocket, Ted. Oh, it did go in, okay. Didn't see that. Well, he didn't play that one well. He needed a full contact in making that ball into the side, so. Now he's gonna have to come with a safety. Well, Majid did close it out, so he stays alive on the winner side, and Skylar Woodward goes to the other side, the loser side. And a good safety at that from Earl. Well, Dennis looking, wasn't sure about this shot. I mean, to come into that short rail here, tough. Boy, this is a tough hit. So much so, he's just trying to tie up a couple balls and you know, needed that seven to get a little closer to the deuce and never happened. So the only real danger here looks to be in the form of the five ball. So Earl's gonna have to develop that five on the left-hand side of the table. And he'll probably try and get the right angle on the three to do just that. So here we go. Well, he's not happy with it. But if he can reach this comfortably, he can play this off of two cushions and swing that cue ball around towards that five or six. But he needs to hit him. He did, but not enough. What a shot. What a shot there. Just a smattering of applause, but I'll tell you what. Well, that's the Earl Strickland. That one five US opens right there. Even though this one's a lot easier to hit than the last one. Problem for Dennis is getting it safe after contact. He may just flail at this and hope for the best. I thought that green six was going to go. Well, Earl still has the weights. You can see his right wrist. He's also got that, Jimmy's got the, the end of the cue is also built up as well. I'm not quite, what's that about? Yeah, he's got a lot of gads that's going on right <laughs> now. Got, I got uh, the finger extensions and. I got a text from uh, a friend of mine, Chris Renfro, who actually has the Accurac, his Accurac employed here at this year's US Open. He told me that uh, the weights on Earl's wrist are due to some tremors that he had trying to settle him down. In the, into his late 40s, they developed. So Chris kind of keeping me in the loop as well as supplying the Accurac here for all these tables. Good job, Chris. Thanks for the info and thanks for these uh, terrific racks that we're using here. So five to one now in favor of Strickland. And uh, you can see Hatch is definitely not on the mark today. And uh, that year long hiatus from the game is definitely telling. Yeah, but his competitive nature still there, isn't it? Look at him. Like he hates to lose. That's one thing that's inherent in all champions, how they show it 
you know, obviously it's going to be different from person to person, but they all hate to lose. Well, we'll be back tomorrow, Monday here in Las Vegas, 9 a.m. again as day two commences at the 2019 U.S. Open Nine Ball Championship. That's 9 a.m. Las Vegas time, plus seven GMT. So Earl Strickland firmly in control right now. Hasn't played uh, uh, anywhere near the level you might think of when you hear the name Earl Strickland, but he has been able to take advantage of a slew of mistakes from Dennis Hatch. Well, he's having a, for a guy who's not breaking, he's still leading five to one, Jim. I mean, he has, he's had like three dry breaks in a row, I think that is. Don't know if this one passes into the corner pocket. Dennis is coming to have a look, see if the two goes by the three into the bottom left. He ha absolutely has to get out here. Almost there. The last time he was down at this position, he scratched on the nine. Uh, I think he's going to get this one. Five to two now. So Hatch, will that be the spark that gets him back in the match? He'll be breaking. You love it though when you see. Players like Dennis just go through the racks. They make it look so easy. That's a bad miss, real bad miss. Well, now Earl has lost it a bit. He's pointing to somebody in the crowd and now he's talking to himself. This could be the moment where Hatch might want to take advantage if he sees uh, Earl losing his composure. Maybe that'll light a little spark, a little fire for Dennis Hatch.
Oh, what a great opportunity now for Hatch to get back in the match. Oh, no. Can he still? Yeah, okay, he can get to that. Well, it was more difficult than he wanted it to be. And again, he does all the dirty work. And just leaves a few balls for Earl. Another gift. Yeah, it's not so much what Earl has done in this match as what Dennis hasn't. Yeah, he hasn't closed the deal when he should have. Nicely done there. Nice shot from Earl Strickland. Six to two. It should be. We should be tied at this point. You don't do this in snooker. Looking at some of the scores from the outside matches. Players that have already dropped a match and In action, Naoki Oi from Japan, 10-2 at Jason Klatt from Canada, the receiving end of that scoreline. Well, your John Mora is up 9-4 uh, over Marlon Manalo on the winner's side. Yeah, still a lot of great players left. Johan Chua of the Philippines in a Really tight battle with uh, Alejandro Carvajal of Chile. Yeah. Chua leads nine to eight. I'll tell you, uh, you may not hear much about guys like Alejandro Carvajal. He can play. He is a really strong he's, player. He's from the Philippines. You don't need to say anything else. No, Carvajal. Chua is the Carvajal's from Chile. But he's play. He's a good player. This is, in the World Cup of Pool, those guys have been doing well. They're, yeah, they're I thought you were still him. talking about Chua, Johan Cho. Oh, he's, Chua. Yeah, he's, he's a good young player. Really good. Won the All Japan Championship, I believe, two times. Well, 6 2 here, center stage. Earl still can't find the measure of the break. and. He's left Dennis a perfect starter in the one. Also in the winner's side, Billy Thorpe. 11-3 winner over Vilmos Foldesh. Taiwan's Cheng Chi Lu, 11-6 over Austria's Mario He. Don't want to put the kiss of death on him and say you should get out from here. Don't pick up your pen yet, Jim. to three now in favor of Earl Strickland. 
Some other scores on the winner's side. Josh Roberts defeats Tyler Steyer in an All-American battle in the second round, 11 to 10. Darren Appleton moves on. He had a bye the first round and uh, defeated Richard Halliday, 11-9. Halliday from South Africa. Shukai Lun defeated uh, Mika Eminen, who's won this event twice, 11 to 4. Wukun Lin, very strong young player from Taiwan, 11 to 3 over Ernesto Dominguez. Wu Cha Ching, a favorite of many fans, two time world champion, 11 to 1 over Zachary Boss of the U.S. Dennis Grabe. 11-7 winner over Sweet, uh, Switzerland's Ronald Regley. Wang Can defeated the great Francisco Bustamante 11-4. Aloysius Yap, fine young player from Singapore, barely got by the USA's Max Eberle, 11-8. Now, all these are on the winner side, so all those... I mentioned that have lost will be moving over to the loser side of the bracket where they get one more chance. That was a bruising break from Hatch there. Three balls down. Sorry, make that two balls down, but I don't know whether he can see enough of this two to be able to knock it in the corner. Well, here's a score that might be of interest. Uh, Albin Ocean, one of the top players in the world, is down to Chris Alexander, seven to five right now. And that is a winner's side match. So we'll keep an eye on that for you. Give the two nine. Oh, that, that scratch just cost that. Dennis that rack. That is brutal. So Earl knocks in the 2-9 to make it 7-3. Earl hasn't really done much today, has he? He's had nothing but dry breaks, and he's still leading 7-3. If you want to keep up to date on the all the latest matches, going on right now head over to qscore.com forward slash tournaments or tournament and then you can click on the u.s open nine ball championship and it will all be right there well these are all long days long arduous days for these players out here especially the ones that have dropped a match already and have to go through the, the loser's bracket. Better be eating lots of fruit, guys. Not for the faint of heart. Well, we'll see if Earl can figure out something. He's tried a couple different stances. He tried the arm weight. He's got the weight still on there. Well, he's moved to a different spot on the table now. We'll see if he can figure out the equation that, or the mystery that is the break. There it is. Oh, and just at the last second, the cue ball gets married up to the nine ball. Push out call. Push 
So he's just left the kick. Dennis hasn't even got out of his chair. Now, does Earl want to try and knock this in? If so, he's got to avoid contacting that eight. Here's another look at the kick shot. Kept him at the table. He's got an easy safety here. I was just going to say a couple balls to try and duck behind. Tried to make that two ball. Just he hit it that bad that he got lucky and got it safe. Then it's going to try and get the cue ball behind the six. Now he takes off the weight. So he's removed the weight from the wrist. So maybe it's uh, was making his wrist heavy, probably getting tired wearing that. Well, and he leaves this on. Maybe go back for the weight. <laughs> or maybe there's something else in the bag. Well, Dennis has has played OK, but he's just in, invariably mistakes have come up. Glaring errors. And that's what happens when you don't play full time. He's not even playing at all lately. He just tuned in. I was speaking with Dennis earlier and I was asking him how he's been playing. He says he hasn't. He moved to South Bend, Indiana a year ago and bought a car dealership. He's selling cars. He doesn't have time to play, he said. really is no substitute for all the repetition that comes with practicing and playing and getting battle hardened. And can he get out here? Seven four. Can he do it, Jim? Well, he probably thinks he's had enough chances to have already won this match. He should be ahead. Yeah. I want to see what my friend Corey has to say to uh, to Dennis. Where if Corey's offering him a little bit of advice. Yeah, 
Yeah, Earl does not like losing, that is for sure. As long as he's ahead right now, he will be okay. If Hatch manages to put a few on him here, I think you're, you will see, see Earl. He tends to lose his composure. And this is what Hatch told me before the match, that when they used to do this traveling road show, they would do exhibitions on the road. They would actually play a match for people, and every time that uh, Dennis would be beating uh, Earl, Earl would get steaming mad and almost ruin the exhibition because, you know, you're supposed to have a good time with the fans who come and pay to watch the exhibition. So he would sometimes have to let Earl win in the exhibition so as, so as not to uh, get the fans upset. Well, another chance here now for Dennis Hatch. Look at this break, Jim. That was uh, probably his best break of the match. Well, he's definitely got a chance. If he ever does start capitalizing on these opportunities, he can turn this match around in a hurry because he's getting them. Once again, Dennis Hatch does all the work. And right at the last second, leaves a shot for Earl. A terrible miss. Obviously came from the poor position on that seven ball. So, Jim, yet another mistake, glaring error from Dennis Hatch. And Earl will just mop this up and be three away from his second win of the day. That takes him to eight four. You know, I wish we uh, we had the stat on who you know, who's pocketed the most balls. I mean, I I would almost bet you that Dennis has made more balls. Than I think Earl. so. Dennis has actually played a bit better, but. He has committed several just jarring mistakes. And there it was poor position on the seven, which led to the miss. What's in the bag? I wonder. Earl's always had a lot of gadgets and things. Sometimes he used to wear the yellow glasses, maybe to take the glare off. Finger extenders, cue extenders. What else? Weights around the waist, weights on the wrist. He's a bit of a mad scientist, isn't he, when it comes to pool? Always trying new gadgets. He's breaking from a different spot Look at this. Now. Yeah, here he goes. <laughs> Experimenting with something else here. Nope. Dry break. But the way things are going, he doesn't have to worry about it because Dennis will just do most of the work and then gift him, gift Earl with uh, the table with only two balls left.
No problems. Everything's in the open for Dennis here. You know, Dennis might not be playing, Ted, that true enough, but, you know, you come here and whether you haven't played or, I mean, players don't care about that. Commentators don't care about that. You know, you paid your money. We all know what you're capable of. And you know that you wouldn't be here unless you expected to be able to play and perform. Otherwise, stay home. That's fair enough. But I mean, when it's the those little details in in pool that are missing from Dennis's game, and we see it here, which you wouldn't see in Albin Ocean, who plays full time. You wouldn't see in a Wu Cha Ching missing those kind of shots and getting out of position like that. No, I I agree. But uh, again, my point is is more that he expects to perform. Oh, absolutely. Otherwise, he wouldn't be here. Yeah, because he doesn't want to embarrass himself. That's for sure. Yeah, he comes here to uh, he wants to get it done. And he's getting it done right here. But we won't mark that score down until that nine goes. Oh, surely he's going to get this. He's still in it. Eight five. And that was off the dry break from Earl Strickland, who moved to the other side of the table. And it's been uh, misery on the break shot for Earl Strickland. And yet he still leads by three. And there you see this beautiful venue here at the Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas. Believe it or not, it took the crew here only one day to set this whole thing up. And this isn't even the complete picture because just behind us, where you're looking right here now, that's the production area behind us here, they are building a, an entirely new arena, which will be called the Diamond Arena. So when we go to the final 16, we're going to move over there. Those will be single elimination matches. Everything is a race to 11 winner breaks until we get to the final, which will be race to 13. Bunch of top players watching this match, though. You saw Johnny Archer there, Rodney Morris in the background, all former champions. And Hall of Famers. Well done. Well, if he takes us off two cushions, he's got to hit just before the side pocket. Right near the side. Had to be closer to the side. Well, this could start to get interesting. <coughs> Hatch just has to limit the errors because he is breaking better than Earl at this point, much better.
love to have some of those unforced errors back in the early going of this match, wouldn't he? Yeah, because there was really no excuse for those uh, errors. He had total control of the table each of those times and just gave it away. better. Well, he's definitely a, a bit more in stroke now, Jim. Well, he's starting to knock some balls in now. And as you've already noted, Ted, his break is better than Strickland's. For Dennis Hatch, the key to success here, limiting those errors. Just keep doing what you're doing on the break. A lot more calm demeanor now. About 20 minutes ago, he was looking up into the ceiling. And the rafters here. Probably questioning his very existence as you tend to do when you're playing bad. Merle just waiting for his chance to get back up at the table. Eight to six in favor of Strickland. Thirty three tables in action here at the U.S. Open Nine Ball Championship. Now watch that one ball, the top of the rack, head straight for the side. Now this time that doesn't go, but he does have the eight ball down. Well, there is a shot. Yeah, he's definitely hitting the break a lot better than Earl. He wants to go here. You can feel it. He's looking at the 1-5 combination. But Position not guaranteed if you play this. And they, that's why the hesitation. He went the other way. Very difficult shot. And he got away with it. I'm not going to win the match because of my break. You heard, I don't know if you heard that, but Earl just leaned over the table and said, I'm not going to win the match because of my break. He's starting to perhaps feel that everything is conspiring against him.
One's a bit too close to that side cushion to jump here. He's going to have to kick at this. Well, he's going to try and jump. Wow, this is very dangerous. Yeah, it is dangerous. He's really got to keep that cue ball down because if it's airborne, when it hits that one, it's going to go on the floor. So this is controlled adrenaline. Oh, he caught it half ball. And look at the result. What a cue that is. Yeah, he. Uh, I can't even get the ball. Earl has something to say about the jump shot. He doesn't believe in it. So that is a foul. Ball in hand for Dennis Hatch. If he can get out here, we have a whole new ball game. Well, it'll take a huge mistake for him not to win from this position. I mean, everything's there. He can float the cue ball down, leave himself a nice angle on the three. Fives over the side. Or pardon me, four is over the middle of the table, top left, five over the side. Everything's there. Slow down. Slow down. Well, Jim, what do you make of that? Well, it had to be a big mistake. That was the only thing that was going to stand in his way. Well, and that is what we have seen earlier in the match. He does all the work and then gives up the table. Oh, he got it. Great shot from Earl Strickland. But again, the mistake from Dennis Hatch. Everything was in the open. Fantastic shot from Strickland, make no mistake, but he should never have gotten out of his chair. He probably can't believe it. He had given that one up, as had we. So it's a familiar storyline for Dennis Hatch. On a shot by shot basis, he's actually played better than Strickland in this match. He's broken better, but we've lost track of how many unforced errors from Dennis Hatch just coming at the worst possible time. 
So just a reminder, this is the second round on day one of the double elimination format. This is the winner side. And some scores from our uh, outside tables. Now, Ukioi defeated your Jason Klatt 11 to 2. So, not a good one for Canada there, Jim. Mesko Fortunski from Poland uh, defeated uh, former world nine ball champion Yukio Akagariyama 11 to 10. Johan Chu of the Philippines, 11-9 over Chile's Alejandro Carvajal. One of Strickland's better breaks in the match. Affords him a, a look at a long one ball. And Rio Yokawa, who earlier beat Chris Melling, he defeated Patrick Manilio of Switzerland 11 to 10. So what a day for the USA's Rio Yokawa. two as well. Three right beside it. Yeah, 57 year old eyes. Those aren't that easy anymore. Luke the five. Yeah, you see it right there. But not much to look at. I don't believe he can see a path to that two. Or maybe, maybe he's looking. A little bit hard to see from our vantage point. Can hit the side of the of the two, but he may be playing to jump off this and get it off the cushion. Still, no, but the eight was right in the path. Or did he try to jump over the eight as well? Well, he knows. That's about it. 
Uh, pardon me, that was the four ball that interjected. Either way, ball in hand with Strickland and uh, you should be able to mark this one on your score sheet pretty soon. I have already. Having said that, well. that was about as bad a shot as Earl's played. <laughs> And so was that one. Finish lines still pretty distant for these guys. Yeah, uh, you'd had to figure with ball in hand that was going to be it, but uh, it's been a rough outing for both players. Assuming Earl goes on to win this, he's going to have to figure out the break shot moving forward. You're not going to get this many gifts with this kind of field. He just he just handed that one to Hatch. I said you could mark it on your score sheet, Ted. I didn't say who for. <laughs> Luckily, I brought an eraser. Dennis Hatch still breathing. And I think he's as shocked as anybody. Nine to seven now in favor of Strickland. Will be Hatch at the table. And he has been breaking better of the two. He can freewheel it from here on in. He was done and dusted. He knows it. He knows he's lucky to still be in this match. All kinds of action going on around the arena. John Mora, Canadian John Mora, 11 4 winner over Marlon Manalo. That brings a smile to Jim's face. Sean Wilkie with his second win of the day, 11 10 over Donnie Mills in an All American affair. Sean Wilkie did well at the Players' Championship, and he's really upped his game lately. So good for Sean. Gay Bowen, 11 6 winner over Elliot Sanderson. Gabe, a former U.S. Open champ. That's right. And Chang Jun Lin, a big winner over Adam Lilly of Australia, 11 to 1. Chang Jun Lin, certainly one of the favorites here. Neil's fine, another favorite, 11 4 over Ireland's Patty McLaughlin. Nine ball down. The nine, wow. And that instantly brings Hatch to just one rack in arrears of Strickland. Nine, eight. Let's watch. It's the first one I've seen here on the main table. You said there was one earlier? Yeah, Ted? that's there was one earlier. So it was kicked in by.
Long distance on this four. Solid stroke. I'll tell you, both he and Earl Strickland, when they raise that cue like that and spear a long one in, they're one of the very few players I've ever seen that can play this shot with supreme accuracy. I mean, being tall doesn't hurt. these two balls here and we will have a tie match and Hatch will be the one at the table. What a turn of events. He was nine six down and now he's tied it up at nine. Actually, and Jim, let's not forget, he was 9-6 down, and he fouled. He gave Earl ball in hand. We thought it was over. It had to be over, but no. Earl gave it back. And now he's breaking for the lead. I give him credit. He hasn't lost his composure, Dennis. He's had every reason to. Lots and lots of errors earlier in the match. Yeah, very oh, that forlorn looking Earl Strickland. Oh. That picture says it all. He has retreated into his shell. You know, to go tell him to try and stay in the moment. 9-9, nine, nine, still anybody's match. Good luck with that conversation. <laughs> Yeah, in terms of body language, there's only one winner. Well, certainly momentum is in Dennis Hatch's corner. Absolutely, and he continues to have a much better break shot in this match than Earl does. So he's got the momentum and he's got the advantage. He's got the Don't one in the Don't side, but look out for that cue ball. And it didn't even get kicked in. He just lost control. Yeah, just when you think it's safe. You think Dennis has found that gear. That's all it takes. One wayward break. And all of a sudden you might see Strickland breaking for the match. This is a nice answer from Earl. Earl's 
Strickland on the hill. One more to go. We learned to play. We never play on a table like this. We play in a full room that's lost three years old. <laughs> we never play on a table. Not sure what he's saying, Ted. Can you make it out? He said something about. We never play on a table like this. We play in a pool room. The cloth, cloth is three years old, which uh, if he's playing on a three-year-old cloth in a pool room, I don't think the management time, of that pool room is very good. Time to change pool rooms. You're right. <laughs> I mean, you have a pool room, Jim. How often do you change the cloth? It's got to be at least once a year. Please, come on. So one more for Earl Strickland, but uh, get this feeling that the story hasn't com been completely told just yet. Nigel Reese checking out see if those balls are frozen together and now Earl Strickland back over here on this side he didn't have any success here the last time he broke from this side of the table it was a dry break he's going to give it another go he got one he got two three doesn't appear to have a shot on the two. Yeah, I was watching the two heading up table as balls were finding pockets. So Earl, with the chance though, he'll probably kick at this off that top cushion. Try and keep that cue ball behind the seven. No, he didn't get it. Didn't contact it the way he wanted. Well, why would we have wanted it any other way, Ted? <laughs> Dennis, to clear up for a hill hill match here on the main table. This nine for a one rack decider. And there it is. Wow. And Dennis Hatch will break. So if he was ever looking for a good break, it's in the next. And all Strickland can do is watch. Absolutely beside himself. And well, he should be. He gave away the match. He still can win it, but uh, he had many chances to close this out. So Dennis Hatch 
who says he hasn't played pool in one year. Even up with one to go with Earl Strickland. Don't forget to join us tomorrow, Tuesday, the 22nd. We'll be here on air on Facebook Live, 9 a.m. again. It's coming up soon, Jim. We gotta get some rest. 9 a.m. We've been going at this for 12 hours today. Oh no, 13 hours now. See, 13 and a half when it's all over. I know you're tired, Ted. Is tomorrow Tuesday or Monday? I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> I don't know. Is it? I don't, oh no, Tuesday. Yeah, that's right. Monday. <laughs> yeah, it is Easter Sunday here. That's correct. All right. So here we go. He's got the one down. And he had briefly for a moment, he had position on the two till that cue ball got kicked. And there he had position until that six came in to take it away. But a chance to take the initiative here. A good attacking safety from Hatch. He was trying to get that cue ball behind the three. His left Earl, pretty easy escape. that he's got a shot at the two and a shot at the two oh Ted dare I say it right now the match is in Earl's hands Well, the way things have been going so far in this match after 20 racks, we're going to wait and see. There has been not one sure thing in this match. Just when you think somebody's going to do something, win a rack, they give it away. Well, that's no good. He's got to get the other side of the table for the five. Right. So he's going to come with a shot here. No, just didn't have the cue power. It is not over yet. Uh, does he want to try and cut this in? Yes, he does. Oh, well done. But it isn't getting any easier. Nope. That's the bad news. The good news is he's hooked him. <laughs> this is one long and winding road, isn't it? Well, I guarantee you, though, Dennis is happy to get to the table. He's going to have to bend this. Going to have to play into that cushion with a lot of bottom and bend it because the nine. Well, unless he's going to try and swerve it, but yeah, I'd uh, I'd be taking a little extra time here too, Dennis. This is the match right here. You hit it, you make it. You miss it, you lose. He's got to play this with bottom, and the speed that he plays this shot is crucial. It's going to allow that cue ball to bend off that cushion. Yeah, 
Yeah, that angle doesn't work, Dennis. You got to bend it. Beautiful shot. Wow. Beautiful shot. Fantastic stuff from Dennis Hatch. And you saw that cue ball bend around the nine. But Speed now. was everything. Here's the key shot now. He's got it. He's got it. He played it at the right speed, Jim. That was really well done, considering the adrenaline that must be pumping through his body. And this is it. Dennis Hatch comes back from the dead to win 11-10. Some kind of match, just what we would have wanted and treated the first day of the U.S. Open treated us all to quite a spectacle. Hatch and Strickland. Hatch stays undefeated. Strickland has to make his way back on the B side.